I've been kind of eyeballing these portable washers for a while. These things you can get online. They're anywhere from about $130 to $160. Now these go under various different brands. Costaway is one of the more popular ones. This is called a TG23 by Think Gizmos. It's very simple to operate. On the left we have the wash timer, 0 to 15 minutes. And then in the center we have a selector switch which is for soft or standard wash cycle plus the drain. And by the way the drain is a gravity drain. There is no motor. So the drain has to be lower than the washer itself. And then finally the last control on the right is the timer for the spin cycle. Now there's two water inlets. One on the left and one on the right. And they give you some hoses that are supposed to fit on there but they're pretty much worthless. So they didn't give you any adapters to the end. The best thing you can do is just throw the things away because you can pour water directly into the tub either with a bucket or if we're going to use it in the shower with a shower head. And what we'll use this for mostly is on extended trips. For example, a couple years ago we did a 4,000 mile round trip from Michigan to Nova Scotia, Canada and back. And we were gone about a month and during that month's time we needed to do laundry. And of course, you know, a lot of private parks do have laundry facilities. And of course you could always go to a laundromat, but that may not be always the easiest thing to do because you don't know where the laundromat is at any particular place. And so you may spend part of your day just looking for one. And then you got to spend several hours there when you could be doing something else. And the other obvious thing is that this does not contain a dryer. And I'll talk more about that later in the video. There's actually two doors that open. The left side is the wash tub. The right side is the spin tub. The wash tub can hold about twice as much as what the spin tub can hold. So you may do one load here in the wash tub and then do a half load spin half a load to spend. Now this thing will handle a, probably 10 articles of clothing or more or less depending on what you have. Of course in the summertime you know when we have t-shirts and shorts and undergarments you can get a lot in here except for if you have to do towels or something that does take some time. You can maybe do four to six towels in a single load. And we found that we can store this and operate this within our shower. And that keeps it out of the way. Of course, if we have to use the shower, we can pull it out. So let's put a load in. And we had to move this forward a little bit so that the power cord could reach the outlet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, we got about 13 articles of clothing in here. And then we need to fill the tub, and I would normally use this wand, but I want to see exactly how much water we use. So I'm going to use the water on a, a can. That's just about five gallons total. It'll take about 15 gallons of water to do a load. And since this is a small load, I'm going to use about half a cap of detergent. And close the lid. We're going to set the timer for 15 minutes. And then we'll just watch it here to see how it works. And now we're just agitating. And the wash cycle just stopped. You can see how dirty the water looks. So next what we want to do is we want to just put it on drain. And you can see gravity feed is draining out of the bottom into the shower stall. And we filled the tub with rinse water. And again before you do that make sure and turn the drain off otherwise the water will just go out. And then we'll turn it on to another 15 minutes and let it rinse. And just like before, we go to the drain and we're draining the rinse water out. And we're pretty much drained, so we have to pull the laundry out of the wash basin. And at this point, we are done with the wash basin. And the next step is to do the spin cycle. 
And this is a little bit particular. You have to kind of get stuff in here even. Because just like with a residential washer, if it's not even, the tub can get a little wacko on you. So we have about half the load in. And then we'll take, fit that in. And you have to close this or else it won't start. And we'll start with about two minutes. And you can see more water coming out. And as soon as the water is done coming out, the spin cycle is over with, although they caution you not to turn these dobs counterclockwise because you can damage them. That's why we only set it to two minutes to start with. And it shut off and it's starting to wind down. And we have one last rinse that we need to do before we call this good. And to do this, we want to lift the drain up because otherwise the water is going to drain out. And then we want to pour about a gallon of water in the rinse tub. Then two minutes again. And then when we're about halfway through, we want to lower our drain hose again and let all the water drain out. And when the rinse cycle stops, if there's still water coming out of there, just crank it up for another minute or so. There are several different ways to do this. The manual recommends a little bit different than what we do. So just use your own judgment, whatever works for you. Okay, the rinse cycle is finally done and slowing down. And we pull the clothes out and they're actually fairly dry. Then we repeat with the other half of the laundry. And I did a test with my Jackery 500 and I found that I could run both motors at the same time using the Jackery. So that opens up a whole lot of possibilities for boondocking. True, you have to do some water management, but here we go. We can run this washer with the Jackery 500. You know, there may be some times when you really can't move the washer above the drain level. And so you may need an auxiliary pump. Well, I found one that works really well. This is actually a solar circulation pump. And it's designed for a solar panel that heats water that has tubing going through it. And that's all this does is it's just a water pump. It's a 12 volt pump and it even comes with a 120 volt adapter. And so, yeah, you just take and hook that to the drain hose and then you can pump water up a little bit. And now this has a three meter head, which means that it should pump water up three meters. So it's going to work. And they're not that expensive. I think they were $20 or something. After washing the clothes, the most obvious method of drying them is going to be outside, hung up on a line. And I'm old enough that my mom used to do that all the time when I was a kid. And I tell you what, nothing smells as good as bed sheets that have been dried in the air. There's no amount of chemicals that can replicate that smell. Anyway, this is uh, a small clothesline. And you just wrap this around a tree or whatever you have handy and you can hang your clothes from it. I also have these hammock straps so that we can put one end around the tree. Some trees are quite large and that way it doesn't rob from the length of the clothesline. And as you can see here, we've looped around a very large tree with our hammock strap and then we have a clothesline suspended between that tree and another one and now we're drying our clothes. Now of course it goes without saying that some private parks may not allow you to do this outside. However, most state parks probably don't care. But there's still another option if you are in a park where you cannot hang your clothes outside and I'll show you that next. So if the park will not allow you to have a clothesline up, if you have a gazebo like I've got, you can hang them inside the gazebo and nobody will say a thing. 